Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, one of you guys left a comment asking for a video about transitions. Actually, this one right here. Now, I thought, why not? Let's dive right into it because I want to answer all your guys' questions. And that's what the comment section is for, right? So today we're going to take you on a journey through DaVinci Resolve transitions. We'll cover where to find them, common issues you might run into, and how to actually use them in your projects. Now, just a heads up, this isn't about showing off all the cool, fancy transitions. I want you guys to think of it more of a crash course. He's airborne! Yep, I'm flying through the air, this is not good. With that being said, let's get started. Let's start with where to find these transitions. What you're going to do is you're going to head over to the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. And in the top left corner, you're going to click on effects. And in these effects, it's going to open up the effects library. Now you can expand the toolbox and you'll see video transitions on the left hand side along with the audio transition. Under video transitions, you'll find categories like dissolve, uh, motion, shape, wipe, you know, all the cool transitions which are the standard transitions that are also in the free version. Now we're gonna keep scrolling to find fusion transitions. These ones are more unique and creative options. And at the bottom, you'll actually discover resolve effects transitions. This includes all the really cool transitions like the burn away effect and some other really neat ones here, okay? Now on the Resolve FX transitions, they might not be on the free version, but they are included in the studio version. I don't know if that's correct or not. I do not have the free edition with me. I apologize about that. But moving on. Now we're going to learn how to preview the transitions. Previewing transitions is actually very simple. You're going to place your playhead over the edit point you want to preview. Next, you're going to make sure your hover scrub preview is enabled by clicking on the three little dots in the transition panel. Now, just hover over any transition to see how it will look at the edit point. You can actually move your playhead to a different edit point and preview another transition the same way. It works like clockwork, guys, okay? Applying transitions is straightforward. All you're going to do is drag a transition from the library and drop it onto your desired edit point. Alternatively, if your playhead is near an edit point, double click on any transition in the effects library and it will automatically apply to the closest edit point. You can even apply transitions to multiple edit points at once by selecting the points, right clicking on your desired transition and choosing add to select edit points and clips. If you need to remove a transition, all you have to do is click on it and hit delete. It's that easy, guys. So we're gonna move on to adjusting your transition alignment. If you accidentally place a transition in the wrong spot, have no worries, guys. All you have to do is right click on the transition and choose from the three alignment options. You're gonna see right here uh, start on edit, which aligns it to the right, end on edit, which aligns it to the left, and center on edit, which places it right square dab in the middle. You can also adjust the alignments using the inspector in the top right corner, which offers the same alignment options. Sometimes transitions won't apply because of a lack of handles or overlap between clips. If you notice that a transition isn't applying in the center, it's likely because there's no extra footage to allow for the overlap. You'll see this indicated by a red highlight on the transition point. While green indicates sufficient overlap, red means, well. <laughs> oh my God, help me, I don't wanna die! Oh, stop, stop and roll! It's not gonna work, guys. So, how do we fix this? To fix this, you're going to use the trim edit mode to roll your clips back. This will create the necessary overlap for your clip. Once the transition point is green, you can add your transition. 
it's a change in duration of the transition. You're just going to simply drag the left or right edge of the transition on the timeline. You could also right click on the transition and select change transition duration or use the shortcut control plus D or command plus D if you're on a Mac to manually set that duration. The inspector window also allows you to adjust the duration with precision and you can set a default duration for all the transitions. Many transitions are actually linear by default. This means they don't have any acceleration or deceleration, which can make them look bland. And to enhance your transitions, all you need to do is go to your inspector tab and adjust the easing in. You know, you could choose from in, out, or in and out for smoother, more dynamic transitions. This adjustment is visualized on the timeline as a common S-curve, which you would notice in the color page, right? An S-curve which you can further customize by clicking the keyframe icons and adjusting the curve to suit your needs. The fusion transitions often have their acceleration built in, so they might not include the easing controls. You can adjust the curve under the inspector window. Experiment with the different curve options from mellow to aggressive and find what works best for your project. With these tips, you'll be able to add, customize, and perfect transitions in DaVinci Resolve, making your projects look polished and professional. And don't forget on August 30th, because we're announcing the winner of the Speed Editor and DaVinci Resolve Studio license. Click that link in the description box if you guys want to enter the win. If you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching, and as always, Practice and create.